A developing story now from the New York Times. They're reporting President Trump asked FBI Director James Comey to shut down the investigation into former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. Now, it reportedly happened during an Oval Office meeting in February and was documented in a memo that Mr. Comey wrote shortly after the meeting. Joining us now by phone is Stephen Portnoy from CBS Radio News. Stephen, all right, what can you tell us about this? Well, Eric, it seems another day, another late afternoon, major blockbuster report hits Washington hard. This report in the pages of the New York Times tomorrow indicates that on February 14th, in the Oval Office, President Trump asked Jim Comey, the FBI director, to essentially lay off Michael Flynn, his uh, then-fired national security advisor. It was a day after the president fired Michael Flynn. February 14th, the New York Times reports that Jim Comey was in a meeting, uh, an otherwise scheduled meeting in the Oval Office, uh, when the president asked other attendees to leave the office uh, while Comey would stay behind. And according to the New York Times, which quotes a memo that Comey wrote contemporaneously, uh, the president essentially implores him and says, according to the paper's report, I hope you can see your way clear to letting this go, to letting Flynn go. He is a good guy, Mr. Trump is said to have said. I hope you can let this go. Uh, Jim Comey, according to this account, uh, told the president uh, he agreed that Flynn was a good guy. Now, this all is said to have happened on February 14th. This would be, uh, I guess, three months prior to where we are right now and the firing of James Comey by the president. Just today, Erica, President Trump, uh, in the context of the conversations about what he told the Russian ambassador and the Russian foreign minister in the Oval Office last week, uh, the president said that he had the absolute right to discuss what has been described as highly classified information. And in one of his tweets this morning, the president said that he uh, had called on James Comey from the beginning of the administration to go after the leakers of classified information within the intelligence community. This New York Times report suggests uh, that uh, Mr. Comey was pressed by the president in February to go after leakers. So uh, clearly that's very much on the president's mind, and it's a story that, again, is a major blockbuster headline as uh, Washington settles into the evening hours. And, Stephen, any uh, statement or response from the White House about this report? Nothing yet, uh, but I'm sure we'll be uh, very interested to hear a, a, a response from the White House. This is uh, just hitting now. As a matter of fact, I can tell you, uh, just as I'm, I'm, I'm glancing at my email, the following is a statement from the White House, which I'll read to you now as I'm reading it for the first time. While the president has repeatedly expressed his view that General Flynn is a decent man who served and protected our country, the president has never asked Mr. Comey or anyone else to end an investigation, including any investigation involving General Flynn. The president has the utmost respect for our law enforcement agencies, reads this statement from the White House, and this is not a truthful or accurate portrayal of the conversation between the president and Mr. Comey. So there you have it, a formal and flat denial uh, by the White House saying that it's not a truthful or accurate portrayal that James Comey was leaned on by the president to end the investigation into Michael Flynn on February 14th, about three months ago. All right, so now we've got the White House denying yet another report. But, of course, as we've seen in the past uh, oh, 20, 24 to 48 hours here, we've had them, seen them deny reports and then come back and President Trump tweeting back out and saying, well, actually, uh, you know, maybe that report is slightly correct here. So maybe we'll have to wait and hear from President Trump himself in a tweet later. How do you think uh, this is going to play now in Congress? Well, it's another story that will only exacerbate the calls from Democrats, and maybe you'll hear more Republicans joining the call, for a special prosecutor, someone independent of the chain of command within the Justice Department who can't easily be fired to oversee the Russia probe. Uh, this just adds uh, so much more fuel to the burning embers of uh, this, the inquiry and the investigation and the questions that surround the connection between President Trump, uh, his campaign, and Russia. 
and it is a, a, a confluence of, of stories that are coming just days before President Trump embarks on his first foreign trip. Uh, it's a seven, eight, nine-day uh, venture through the Middle East, and you, you have it in the, amidst these lingering questions about the FBI director and whether the president's going to try to announce a new uh, nominee to replace James Comey before he leaves on that trip. Of course, the, the news of the past only 24 hours about the possibility that he uh, relayed classified information to the Russians that may potentially uh, damage the United States international uh, standing with respect to the way that the intelligence community counteracts with its counterparts all over the world. It was reported, and, and I believe CBS News can confirm, that uh, Israel, our, our friend in the Middle East, was the source of the intelligence that uh, ISIS has been working on this laptop plot to uh, sneak laptop bombs onto airplanes undetected. Uh, and so you have all of this happening uh, all together. The Europeans are mad about the notion that uh, we're about to ban or potentially ban passengers on transatlantic flights coming to the United States from European airports, from having uh, laptops in the passenger cabin of the aircraft. Uh, the uh, Deputy Homeland Security Secretary will be in Brussels tomorrow for high-level urgent talks that the uh, European Union has requested about this issue. So there's so much going on on the world stage, uh, all surrounding uh, the president and his policies and the way he's conducted foreign policy. You know, Stephen, can you um, do something for us here? Can you break down the timeline a little bit as it relates to Sally Yates' testimony, as well as even President Obama going to both going to Trump to warn him about Flynn? And then we have this piece of information from February leading up until, um, obviously, the firing of Director Comey um, in May. So just give us a little, our viewers, a little bit of a timeline here. Sure. This all would have happened within the first month of Trump, uh, the Trump administration. Remember that uh, when uh, President Trump was sworn into office on January 20th, uh, Michael Flynn was his national security advisor. And the, the questions then were, were raised, even before the inauguration, about the conversations that Flynn had with the Russian ambassador, Sergei Kislyak, prior to Mr. Trump taking office, about whether Mr. Trump and his administration might keep in place uh, the Obama administration sanctions on Russia. And Flynn uh, denied that in his conversation with the vice president. That's well established. Mr. Pence went on Face the Nation and told the country that Flynn insisted that that was not the subject of their conversation. Attorney, uh, Deputy Attorney General, Acting Attorney General Sally Yates, who was a holdover from the Obama administration, approached the White House counsel Don McGahn on January 26th and 27th, so within the first week of the Trump administration, and warned Don McGahn, the White House counsel, that intercepts of Flynn's calls with the Russian ambassador ca uh, contradicted his formal claims. But it would be another 11 days, more than a week and a half, before President Trump would actually fire Michael Flynn. And uh, one of the things that happened in the intervening days were, uh, well, were reports, mainly in the pages of the Washington Post and other newspapers, confirmed by other outlets, that Flynn's uh, statements to the vice president uh, that he relayed to the American people contradicted the uh, intercepts that American intelligence had. So you had uh, the public disclosure of this classified information that was really very much getting under President Trump's skin. Fast forward to February 13th, Flynn is fired. February, February 13th, Flynn is fired. February 14th, you had this reported meeting in the Oval Office, which we've just learned about in the pages of the New York Times tonight, uh, where Michael Flynn is the subject of a conversation between President Trump and James Comey, the FBI director. According to Comey's own writing of a contemporaneous memo that is detailed in this New York Times report, President Trump implored Comey to essentially lay off Flynn. It's been a day after Flynn was fired and after the acting Attorney General Sally Yates had already approached the White House with her concerns that perhaps uh, there was something untoward in, her, in his conversation with the Russian ambassador. So you have the president, again, according to this report, telling Comey to lay off Flynn uh, and essentially drop the matter. Three months later, you have Comey's firing. And uh, the White House insists it had nothing to do with the Russia uh, situation. 
But then President Trump told NBC News just last week that, in fact, the Russia story was very much on his mind when he decided to fire Comey. And it definitely seems uh, a little disconcerting here, Stephen, you think, that, you know, that even though President Trump had all this information on his national security advisor, that he would still push for Comey to take a step back from, from this investigation because he's a so-called good guy. That doesn't seem like a, a reason to uh, pull back from an investigation into something this serious. What we still don't know, though, Erica, is exactly what the Justice Department is hoping, uh, uh, well, w w could. Uh, sh well, let's just say this. We don't know where the investigation into Russia lies. We don't know exactly what the uh, U.S. government, uh, rather the Justice Department and the FBI, has on Flint. Just laying it out there. We don't know. We know right. uh, there have been reports that in the last week that grand jury subpoenas have begun going out to obtain uh, some of Flynn's records. The allegation has been that he uh, was paid tens of thousands of dollars by a Russian state-owned media outlet for an appearance that he gave in Russia and a speech uh, that he, for which he was paid and did not uh, uh, disclose that payment in some of his formal federal filings, although uh, Flynn's attorneys have indicated that the uh, Defense Department, for which Flynn worked as head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, was informed of the trip, and uh, uh, there was, there was a, an intimation that he was paid for it because he was tied in with a speaker's bureau, which would have paid him or, or, or seen to it that he was paid a speaker's fee. Uh, long story short, there is so much we don't know but one thing that is uh, reported tonight by The New York Times is that President Trump, in the Oval Office, asked James Comey, the FBI director, to essentially drop the matter and let Flynn, uh, let this Flynn thing go, essentially. And I'm paraphrasing. What's important is the fact that, according to The New York Times, James Comey wrote about his exchange with the president that day. Um, and uh, the, the Times report makes a point of noting that it is uh, rather standard practice for FBI agents when they conduct interviews to immediately after those interviews write a narrative, an account of what the witness told them. And very often those reports are uh, essentially accepted as uh, very credible evidence in, court of, in a court of law because this is something that an FBI agent is specially trained to do to take very detailed notes of a conversation that he or she has had with a subject or a witness. So the fact that the FBI director is taking these contemporaneous notes, leaving a paper trail, as it were, is highly significant and uh, is, is uh, certainly in the minds of many who see Comey as a credible figure, it will weigh heavily on those people, particularly the ones in Congress. And lest we forget, Stephen, that, of course, it was just in a Twitter post on Friday that President Trump had, you know, somewhat in like a thinly veiled threat said, quote, James Comey better hope there are no tapes of our conversations before he starts leaking mm -hmm. to the press. Meanwhile, there are actual memos that he was writing uh, in real time. So... <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how this all unfolds. Any word, Stephen, on whether or not James Comey is going to be um, going to be speaking in front of Congress at all? I know last week, um, I think it was Senator Lindsey Graham had put it out there that potentially they wanted to bring James Comey in and be able to, you know, speak in front of them um, plainly. But have you heard any sort of developments on that? You know, I have not heard any developments. I can remember at the start of the week there was discussion that Comey uh, would be interested perhaps in sharing his story but did not want to do it in a closed setting. Exactly uh, whether and when he might testify, that still remains an open question. Uh, but I can assure you that certainly there are members of uh, both parties who, who do want to hear from Comey. Now, tomorrow, Thursday, oh, sorry, not tomorrow, tomorrow's Wednesday. Sometimes mm -hmm. in Washington, it's hard to keep track. Um, <laughs> uh, on, on Thursday, the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein is expected to brief all senators Thursday afternoon at 2.30. That's something we learned very recently from uh, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Now, senators are going to want to hear from Rosenstein because you'll remember he's the official at the Justice Department, newly installed, who wrote the memo last week, only a week ago, 
uh, though it seems longer, that I uh, detailed all the reasons why he recommended that uh, James Comey essentially be let go. It was that recommendation that was uh, initially uh, pointed to by the Trump administration last Tuesday and Wednesday as the rationale for Comey's departure. It was uh, later Wednesday when the president told NBC News that that really wasn't it at all. It was more the idea that he was a showboat, a grandstander, the Russia thing was on his mind, and he had decided long before Rosenstein's memo, Stein's memo, uh, that, that uh, Comey had to go. Rod Rosenstein's um, closed appearance before this all senators briefing will be uh, hi is highly anticipated and certainly those senators members of both parties will have lots of questions about the conversation that he and Jeff Sessions the attorney general had with the president on Monday of last week prior to the drafting of that memo and Comey's firing. Um, Stephen, we're just hearing that uh, Senator uh, Richard Burr, the Republican from North Carolina, who, of, of course, had one of the few Republicans to come out um, last week and, you know, publicly expressed concern about um, the firing of um, James Comey, as, 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 as well as just all of this uh, Russia sort of situation swirling around the White House. He's also the head of the Senate Intelligence Committee. He has told PBS that the burden is on the New York Times to furnish this memo. What do you make of that? Well, I think that means that Chairman Burr is, uh, is a bit, uh, if not skeptical, he, he, wants to, he wants to verify that what is being widely now discussed here in the nation's capital uh, is, is a credible thing, because what we now have uh, from the White House is a formal denial that there was anything like this. So uh, the New York Times, in its, in its reporting, essentially uh, has it, if you kind of sort of read the way that the, the syntax of, of, of the paragraphs are drafted, it suggests that someone read to the reporter what was in the memo. Um, whether the New York Times actually has a, a physical copy of the memo and is in, in a position to print it, I, I don't know, but that seems to be what Chairman Burr would like to see. Um, we and other news organizations are going to be trying very hard in the next minutes and hours to try to see if we are able to, uh, in, in a very firm way, match the New York Times reporting. I can tell you that our reporters, my colleagues, are already in touch with our sources across uh, the law enforcement community to see if we can... Um, match in a way that we feel confident uh, that indicates that Comey had shared this memo, its existence, or perhaps the text of it with uh, sources who are in a position to speak to it with authority. That seems to be what the New York Times has been able to do. And if we can do the same, well, then uh, you'll know that the story is out there and has uh, not just legs, but is walking, if not running. Uh, for now, it's, it's a major blockbuster report that's only breaking in the last half hour. And all across Washington, reporters are now on the phone and uh, texting and emailing their sources to see who knows what about this memo. Up on Capitol Hill, of course, uh, there are lots and lots of questions that uh, members of Congress have. There is no indication at this point that any member of Congress has actually seen the memo. And I think that's why you hear Chairman Burr, the head of the Senate Intelligence Committee, saying that if the New York Times has it, they ought to print it. All right. Uh, certainly the White House wants this quote, Russia thing to go away, since the president himself called it a made-up story. But as you said, Steve, this thing definitely has legs.